Welcome to Electro Online. Now that we know what the UERE is, how is it calculated? Well, it's not a simple calculation because it does have to take into account a whole number of factors. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. Well, first of all, UERE is called a user equivalent range error. In the previous video, we saw what it represented. Now, it turns out that it's made up of two components, the URE and UEE. Now, the URE is defined as the user range error, and we should just call it the range error. I don't know why they put the word user in front of that, of course. The user is going to be using it. But essentially, it's the range error. And then the UEE is the equipment error. And again, they put the word user in there for whatever reason. I guess they always want acronyms of at least three letters, and that's why they put a, another word in there. So it's the range error and the equipment error, and how it's calculated that it's equal to the square root of the range error squared plus the equipment error squared. Now, it turns out that the URE and the UE are primarily components of the pseudo range errors, the errors that come up when we make the pseudo range measurement, and then we, of course, need to adjust it for all these parameters. So the UEE depends on the code noise, the multipath error, the ionospheric delay, the tropospheric delay, and any other errors you want to throw in there, such as the relativity errors. And to find the UEE value, we take the square root of each of the components squared and added together. The URE is consistent of the orbit errors and the ionospheric delay, and it also uh, calculated by taking the square root of orbit error squared plus the ionospheric delay squared. Now, to give you a feel of how big these numbers are, they're all in terms of meters, so the error that it, it gives you is in meters, but that's not the only thing we need to do. In the next video, we'll show you some additional calculations we should make. Well, it does depend upon what mode we're in, the civil code or the CA code, uh, PY single channel, PY dual channel, M code single channel, M code dual channel. And notice in state 5, we have values for these in terms of meters 2.14, 1.17, 1.401, 1 and 1.08. You can see that M code does a little bit better than PY code. And in state 3, of course, these are not applicable because we only will be in single channel M code or PY code if we are in state 3. So those are the values for the UEE that we then use in our calculations depending upon what mode we're in. For the URE, what we do here is we take the orbit errors. And you can see what they are. They're roughly about 0.97 for CA or Y code, and we have 0.93 or 0.93 for M code. And then for the uh, ionospheric delay, we have some relatively large errors. If we are in single channel, either CA or Y or M code single channel, but notice there's no errors for the ionosphere if we're in dual channel mode because at that point having the two channels with two different frequencies we can get the air out caused by the ionosphere. Now again when we take this number squared add it to this number squared and then we sum them together we take the square root we get this number right here so this is the square root of these two numbers squared and added together. And then notice when we're on dual channel the the URE numbers are actually quite small. So that means we have gotten rid of most of the error caused by the URE. The orbit errors still count, but the atmospheric errors are therefore removed. And then what we do is we take the URE number squared plus the UE number squared, add it together, and that gives us the UERE. And that is typically used in GPS. Now, of course, that's not the final calculation we need to make. We need to make some additional adjustments to get a true number in meters for the actual errors that we have to account for when we make these measurements. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that as well. 